Howdy and welcome to Barstool Blathering, where sport and wit come together like a shot of Jameson's chased with pickle juice. Sounds a bit strange, but shockingly good. I'm your host and pickle-backing SOB, Randy Man. Let's talk some college football. Too cold to start a fire, I'm burning diesel, burning dinosaur bones. After a great weekend of college sports, we know athletic competition is alive and well in the world. And so too are we. It's nice to be on the right side of the grass, isn't it? From college football to college basketball, November is in the crease of sport and it does not disappoint. With 100 plus games tipping off on Friday, college spirit in the road to the Final Four is back. We'll soon be covering more hoops action, but for now let's talk some college football. Last week, the Oregon Ducks were bullied yet again by Stanford with old school smash mouth football, losing their number two pole position and paving the way for Florida State, who now has Bama in its crosshairs. Number one, Bama rolls as they do, defeating a sloppy LSU on Saturday. They have Mississippi State, Chattanooga, and a surprising one loss Auburn team to close the regular season in the Iron Bowl. FSU fortified its number two position and has Syracuse, Idaho, and a slumping Florida to finish. Bama and Florida State are now destined to meet in the BCS Championship. Number three, Ohio State may very well go undefeated two years in a row, but the Big Ten just doesn't have the power rankings this year to make them a BCS contender. And while Stanford put Oregon in check, they too are in check with their only loss coming from the Utes of Utah. The Stanford Cardinal holds down the number four spot. And then there is Baylor, putting as many points on the board as their basketball program at number five. Speaking of Baylor, they've got Texas Tech at home this weekend in a Big 12 showdown. I'm sure I'm late to school here, but I still find it ironic that the Big 12 has 10 teams and the Big 10 has 12 teams. I remain puzzled. That said, let me dissolve my confusion by introducing Gabby, the most gorgeous and effervescent numbers girl this side of the Pecos. She got mad, mad stats. What say you give us the uh, Baylor-Texas Tech line this weekend? Well, thanks for the intro, Randy, you pickle-backing SOBU. What's up, guys? The point spread for Texas Tech versus Baylor has Baylor laying minus 27 points to the Red Raiders. Now, the Bears are ranked third in the nation this year against the spread at 7-1. The Red Raiders are 4-1 against the spread in their last five meetings at Baylor. And overall, the favorite is 10-3 against the spread in their last 13. Back at you, Randolph. 27 is a lot of points in this matchup, but Texas Tech, on the other hand, has dropped their last three games. We know they can put some points on the board, but whether or not they can muster their early season success and get back on track is up to them. The previous two meetings claimed Baylor the victor, winning in overtime last year by a touchdown and winning 66-42 in 2011. The total is liable to be 107 and a half. Okay, perhaps linemakers will drop the hook by Saturday. Let's call it a solid 107. Truth be told, I don't know what the total is going to be, but I'm taking the over regardless. The scoreboard may be a real short circuit in this game. Our Pac-12 matchup of the week, Stanford versus USC. In Week 11's most memorable game, it was the Stanford Cardinal that held true, whooping up on the Oregon Ducks, a team most thought would be playing Bama for the national championship. Stanford was a beast and just manhandled these guys. And if it wasn't for the loss against Utah, there would be some discussion regarding them as the number two spot alongside FSU. Stanford has USC this weekend in the Coliseum, and one would think their show against Oregon, they will roll all over the Trojans. But look out, USC has won four of their last five since Lane Kiffin was expelled and put 62 points on the board last week in a drubbing of Cal. Now let's swing things back to our lovely Miss Gabby. Gabby, what's her point spread in this matchup? Well, Randy, the Stanford Cardinal is giving up minus three points as they soar down to SoCal. I can't wait to see this game. Head-to-head, -head, Stanford is at 4-0 against the spread in their last four meetings in the Coliseum. Interestingly enough, the underdog is 5-1 against the spread in their last six meetings. Go Trojans! Gentlemen, man cannot deny when a beautiful girl speaks. No matter how good Stanford looked last week, there is something about this game that is making me lean with Gabby and the Trojans in this one. But what do I know? One would think the Cardinals should be laying at least a touchdown scored by their defense alone. We'll soon see if the Trojans have shaken their albatross and found their new identity. This game will definitely prove that. That said, best of luck out there. Till the next time I remain on the right side of the grass. Cheers.
I'll take the river down to still water and ride a pack of dogs. I'm going to.